Welcome to today's 3D print. Tonight, I finally got the room cleaned up a bit. I got the enders moved over here, the duplicators moved on the tray over there, and the E10 and the CR10 are over here, and the third CR10 will also go over there. Um, surprisingly, I was able to pick up the E10 and move it to a different table without interrupting the print. <laughs> I know, crazy, whatever. I need more light. There we go. Um, so, today, the second CR10. This has been sitting in the other room for a couple weeks now, so I'm finally going to get around to building it. This is the Hicktop CR10 from Amazon for $530, which is, by the way, now available for $510. That is US Ship Prime, so you get two days. Nice. Or, if you want to save some money, buy from Gearbest. $397, I think. So, we're going to build the CR-10. But first, I'm going to have to move that camera, since I think it is way too close to be able to catch any kind of reasonable video of this process. I will be back. There we go. Time to build a printer. Hopefully I got enough light. I got as many lights turned on as I could. Including hopefully this one will light up my face a little bit so it's a dark. Did I get the right side? Who knows? Yes I did. I got the right side. It's like a 50-50 shot whether you're going to open from the top or the bottom. First component is the bed. Nicely wrapped. Boom. Boom. Goodie box. Ooh, that hot end is loose. Tape. More foam. Come here. I don't resist. There we go. Gantry. And brain box. Okay. I believe that's all that is in this here box. Yep, as usual, it is very well packed. Now, can I get rid of this without knocking anything over? Yep. Alrighty. Gantry, brain box, goodie box, and base unit. That is an end cap. That goes there. It does not stay very tight. There it goes. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all this blue stuff, which I really don't need. You guys know what Drogon is? Drogon? Drogon? I only know what it is because of the description. I haven't actually seen much of the program, but that's a little sneak tidbit of what's coming up on the next Mega Printisode. It's about 50 hours in. It's got another 10 or 12 hours to go. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah, kind of figured that was coming. Stay put. Alright. Stay put. See if this glass plate's flat or not. By the way, um, when you buy a Hicktop CR10, you're buying a Creality CR10. They are literally the same thing. Um, Hicktop doesn't make printers. Hicktop OEMs printers. What that means is they went to Creality and said, "We want to sell your printer with our name on it," and they said, "Okay," and slapped their stickers on it. Car manufacturers do the same thing. The um, Geo Prism is a Toyota to sell. The Geo Tracker is a Suzuki Sidekick. The Dodge Caravan, the um, Chrysler Town and Country, and the Plymouth Voyager. All the same van. That, identical. You can take parts off one and put it on the other. Um, the um, Geo Metro was a Suzuki Swift. Um, the new Geo Tracker is a Suzuki Viterra. You know, it's 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 called OEMing. That's um, so when you buy a Hicktop CR10, you're buying a Creality CR10 with a Hicktop sticker on it. Literally, there isn't two companies making these printers. They all come from the same factory. So, the advantage of Hicktop, you can pay an extra 110 bucks, and you can get it prime shipped. So you get it right now instead of weeks from now. Well, that belt's nice and tight. Oh, this has an eyelid. Does my other one have that? I'm going to assume it does. And I, interesting. By the way, if anybody wants these, the whole set, so you want to do your printer in blue, pay me the shipping of yours. Stupid color thingies. Of course, it's always fun. Good. Peel the plastic off. I don't know why everybody seems to like that. Okay. How's the bed? A little loose. Not bad. Now let's use the new jewels. This is all over the place, but we'll fix that up easily. It's all broken! Oh, that sucks! They sent me a roll of filament that isn't, um, it's a bigger roll that isn't, um, white, but it's completely worthless. <laughs> it's literally a thousand pieces! Ha oh, Too bad. That's some brittle friggin' filament. Damn. Spill holder, power cable, spatula. Scraper. PTFE tube that we will be replacing. Acupuncture needle. Limit switch and T brackets for the sides. The rest of the spool holder. USB cable. Reserve parts. Oh no, they don't give a spare hot end anymore? Well, don't that suck. So there is some slight differences, or they've changed what they're doing, because it looks like it comes with a spare limit switch, the spare nozzle, and spare, um, it's fine, 
spare nozzle and spare compression fitting for the Bowden tube and a couple of spare nuts and bolts including one for the tower you got your assortment of tools and nippers but no spare hot end that kind of sucks I think that's something that they should continue to do I really like the idea of them including a spare hot end with the, with the printers oh wow now this is something my original one didn't come with the Creality one didn't come with so I guess Hick did this extra or this is a newer revision um, nice little color manual now my first one was used um, it looked new, but somebody else had opened the box, of course, I bought it used, so it's possible that um, they threw this away. That this may have been in there with the um, original one. But still, that's nice. It's just too bad the filament's trashed. So there's the goodie box, empty. Okay. I'm not going to follow any sort of instructions. I'm just going to build the printer, and I'll explain to you what I'm doing as I do it. You don't really build these printers so much as put a couple of parts together. They're, they're basically pre-assembled. I do love that they include the nippers. They come in very handy. Now this is nice. They've changed over to the long Allen keys and ball end Allen keys. My original one came with... Uh, can I show you? My original one came with these little stubby ones. Well, this one comes with the ones that the Ender came with. The nice long ball end Allen keys. Much nicer. I like those a lot. Of course, your little screwdriver. No idea what it's for. Never had a use for it. It would be nice if they would include the one that the A and E10 comes with. It's actually a very cool one because it's a Phillips and it's a um, straight head slotted. I like that. It's nice. Your little wrenches. So let's tighten up this. Which one's the concentric? There it is. They're over here. There we go. It literally takes that long. It's nothing. It's, it's really... Now that bed is nice and tight. There we go. Nice tight bed that doesn't resist. The left side, the three um, wheels on the bottom here. These three wheels here. These, these bolts are concentric. What that literally means is that instead of the bolt being round, it's oval shaped. So that when you turn the bolt, you're actually pushing something further away or closer. You're tightening up the wheels rolling on the 2040 extrusion, the V-slot extrusion here. So now your bed, you want to make sure it does not wiggle this way and it does not wiggle this way. All right, you just give them all just a tick, 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 tighten them up just a tiny bit until there is no wiggle at all. When all that wiggle is gone, you're good. Actually, while we're here, one of the first things I think you should do is make sure all of these bolts are actually tight. The ones that actually hold the extrusion together. Usually they are, but if there's any looseness in them, then your printer won't be straight. It'll wiggle, it'll wobble. So check all of these bolts. Don't crank them. Just put the wrench in there. See, that one was a little bit loose. Just a little. There we go. Just make sure they're all nice and tight. Oh, that one looks loose. Looks like it went in crooked when they assembled it. Yeah, it looks like they stripped it too. But it's not super critical where it's at. It's holding. I hate those um, pan heads. They suck. 
You should use cap screws everywhere. Adjust your... Oh, that was loose. So you check them all. Yep, both of those were loose. You don't want your wide motor moving around on you. They're actually using hammer nuts. That's some big hammer nuts. That's a little smaller. This is just the feet. Another reason you don't want bolts to be loose is that wiggling equals noisy. Nobody wants a noisy printer. CR10 is noisy enough. We don't need loose parts making it noisier. I really do like that they include the longer wrenches. That's a big improvement. just fit that. That's interesting. The screws that hold the stepper on, none of the wrenches that came with the printer fit it. Okay. They don't look loose though. The wide bed is nicely tightened up, tensioned, so I'm just making sure these bolts are actually tight. They were all a little bit loose, looser than I would like. Uh, bed is already at maximum down, which is what you want. Let's see how straight that is. Do I have a good straight edge handy? I don't know how straight that is. Not bad. Yeah, bed's pretty straight. I'm surprised. No warp at all. Okay. Next up. Installation of the gantry. The way this goes on is it just sits right on top of here like that. What I do is I tip the whole bugger this way and I just feed it in. Well, it would help if I actually got the bolts. That would help. <laughs> uh, limit switch will go on this side. The bare one will go on this side. Now, don't use lock washers on these. Just go metal on metal. It will stay tighter better. should spin right in by hand until obviously they pull in far enough that you can't get in there with your hand anymore. Don't tighten them up until all four are in. Don't tighten them, just get them in. As soon as you feel it snug up, stop. Get the other side in.
just like that. You'd have to be pretty rough with it to hurt this thing. And you'd have to be pretty nasty to it. It's just some burrs of aluminum dirtying the threads. No big deal. Okay. Four of them are in. Give it a little jiggle. Make sure it's straight. Make sure nothing's pinched. Make sure nothing's in the way. Crank them down. These should be very tight. Not crazy stupid tight, but tight. the reinforcements. Um, these should be pretty loose. And you just pop them in. Jiggle it around until they pop in. Do look inside. Make sure the hammer nuts actually turn because they have to turn to engage. So if you have them too tight, they won't turn. So you gotta loosen them and then tighten them. It's kind of counterintuitive. Until you realize how they work and then it makes total sense. Like that one there, I had to loosen it again to get it to tighten. I think that one's stripped. Nope, just wasn't right all the way. Oh no. Yeah, I think that one might have stripped. Oh, nope. Just a burr. Yeah, we're good. You come with extras. Okay. 
Now we come over here and do this one. Now this one has the limit switch on it. So this is both um, your T-brackets, actually identical, the T-brackets the same, except that there's a, an additional plate attached here and that plate has your limit switch on it. You can't tighten up the limit switch, it tightens up with the other plate. It's not a separate tightening. If it needs a little help, just stick your a second wrench in there and make that hammer nut turn. There we go. And also don't tighten them all down too tight because that will prevent the other ones from turning. Just snug them. And when you see those hammer nuts turn, you know you got it. If you crank one down, you're going to bend the plate out and that will prevent the other hammer nuts from turning. Make sure everything's tight, nothing's loose. It's an unusually quiet one. This one's loose as all hell. I believe that bottom one is the... Rod looks nice and straight. And it's pretty greased too. That's nice. this. feels tight. But I don't like the fact that it can drop on its own, so I'll tighten that up a little bit. There we go. Okay, that's that loose. There we go. No play. Feels a little too tight. You want it tight enough to stop play, but not so tight that it makes it harder to move it. Time limit reach had to start the next clip. I'm surprised it didn't start the next clip automatically. It should have. There we go. No play. Just enough to stop any play. Okay. Is this the concentric here? No. No. Oh, interesting. This side does not have a concentric. Only that side has a concentric. Hmm. doesn't fall on its own, I gotta push it down. Those wheels are nice and tight. These wheels are nice and tight, they don't spin on their own. Good. I'm happy. 
Your printer's largely done at this point, now it's just a matter of plugging the wires in. You're also going to have the four washers and one extra hand nut for the, um, the filament holder. I would toss them in with your spare parts bag. And they are starting to label them. It says reserve part, information, rack screws, so they are labeling them now. That's good. That's a suggestion I made to them after the first one, although I doubt my suggestion made any difference. They are probably already doing it. Don't send me shredded filament next time. Put some better filament in there, guys. It's literally in pieces, thousands of pieces. It's broken all around. But, ah, I like freebies! And you've denied me my freebies. Ah, oh, I'm gonna leave it. I was gonna change the Bowden tube out, but you know something it works so well the way it is, and leave it alone. Yep. Right. Oh, this is loose on here too. At least it's not tight all the way. installed. Okay. Time to wire up. I'm going to turn this printer sideways so it's easier because all the connections, with the exception of the Y bed, are all right here. Z. Z. So that one needs to go on the bottom so it doesn't get interfered with. Make sure it's a good connection. That's what caused me trouble before. Okay. Why? Why are you doing this to me? I don't know. That one, and that one. Okay. Well, that's a short connection. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I want that above. Now this one has to go up, correct? Yes. This one has to be above everything. So you gotta organize the cables in such a way, like these. this one moves back and forth. So I wanna make sure it's above the others. So it doesn't hang up on anything. I still have to make the mount for it. Um, this one doesn't matter. So I have it on the bottom since it doesn't move. I just make sure it's all the way at the bottom so none of these other cables, when they move, grab this Z one and move it and jiggle it. This one has to actually raise up and down with the printer. So you want to make sure this one is all the way on top, above everything else, since it's got to lift up with the printer. This is the extruder. Well, that doesn't lock in. This is the X. And this is the limit switch. Okay. The 
this feels plenty tight. So the belts were pre-tensioned, they're perfect, I got no complaints about them. Uh, one thing I did have a problem on a couple other printers, never on my CR10, but check and make sure these um, grub screws for all your extruders are nice and tight. I have had loose grub screws before, and that sucks. It's, it takes you forever to realize what the problem is and track it down. So just do it while you're here. Interesting, this one only has one set of screws? Oh no, two sets. Okay. Missing anything else? I don't think so. I believe we are done. Just have to give it power. Where's that second one at? There it is. Again, make sure this one is above everything else. Since this has to go up with the entire printer, you want to make sure it's free and clear. Okay. Keep everything healthy and out of the way. It's not a bad idea to zip tie these together up here. Not tight, but um, just to keep them out of the way. I'll make my cover for this and then this will sit right inside that cover just like it's supposed to. And as you see, it's free and clear to move around as needed. Let's tighten that up a little more. Is that the concentric? I think it is. Hmm. Okay. You know what it says now? It says, I'm hungry, feed me plastic. You out of the way, get you out of the way, you're above everything, you are above everything. Okay. Man, this thing is big. <laughs> I almost forgot. Switch to. Interesting. It's I I believe it is set to 110. Yes. Alright, that's um. If anybody from Hicktop is listening or Creality is listening, you should always set the printer to 220 volts, never 110 volts. If you plug a 220 volt device into a 110 outlet, nothing happens, usually. If you plug a 110 device into a 220 outlet, magic smoke. <laughs> so by setting it for 220, you are sure that nothing wonky can happen. So always default to 220 and let the user switch it to 110. Although I guess since this is being sold from Amazon in the U.S. market, it kind of makes sense to default to that. SD card. Is it an unmarked SD card? No, it is a Kingston 8 gig. It appears to be legitimate. It's probably slow as balls. And class 4, it's fine. You really don't need fast for a 3D printer. Because um, it's certainly not gonna the printer certainly ain't gonna print faster than it can read from the card. You know, that's like the third time I went to knock that wrench over and I stop it each time and come out.
make sure your cable does not get in the way of any of your unit cables here. So make sure you are under everything. Let's grab a roll of PLA. As I suggest to all of my viewers and anybody who asks, I always start with a roll of eSun PLA Pro. It prints like friggin' butter and it removes itself from the equation of troubleshooting. If there's something going wrong, it's probably not the PLA if you're using the eSun. The PLA Pro. I don't know about their regular PLA, I've never used it. I only use the I've used their Pet G and I've used their PLA Pro and that's three millimeter. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> I guess we are going to use pink. I don't think this is PLA Pro though. Pink PLA. Hmm. This might be regular PLA. I don't think I've ever used a roll of e some regular PLA. That's right, I forgot when I ordered that. That was the one time I ordered, I got a really good deal on a roll, and I said, like, oh yeah, and I get it in the mail and it's three millimeter. Arr! A little annoying. It's all your fault. I don't know who you are, but whoever you are, it's your fault. It's the American way. It's everyone's fault but my own. Pick somebody, blame them. <laughs> Come on. They tape there. It's good. It keeps from tangling, but they have this, um, Fiberglass reinforced packing tape they use to secure their filament. Yeah, I don't think this is PLA Pro. I think this is regular stuff. Oh well. Slip right in. prepped. For now, I'm just going to slap on the last plate it comes with. I believe that's my print and Z right there. Let's see if it's straight. Oh, well, that's definitely straight. And I'll see if the glass is straight. Is that the print and Z right there? No, that's the, that's the mirror. What did I do with the print and Z? Got my mirror pane to use. Now, depending on which one you get, don't forget to remove the little rubber feet, the little feet on the bottom of the glass otherwise it won't actually be touching the aluminum plate and you won't get good heat conduction. These are available for nine bucks on Amazon. I'll have a link below. Um, if you want cheaper and you know you're going to need a lot, although it's a lot thicker, um, you can get a six pack for ten dollars from Home Depot. They're not as nice, they're not as clean, but they're just as flat. Well, I don't know if they fixed their quality control, but I can tell you that the glass pane that came with this one is perfectly flat on both sides, so this is a good piece of glass. Which means I'll be hanging on to that. Alright, what did I do my print and Z? Not there. It. Nope, that's the other 
one now. I don't know what I'd do with it. Give me a second. I want to look for it. Found it! I really like my Britain Z. This is by far what I consider the best print surface money can buy. And it's not very expensive. Let's see, is there a receipt in here? Where did I pay for this? I want to see 30 bucks. Yeah, 31.75. Did I get the right size? Yes, I did. This is, as far as I'm concerned, it's the only thing I'll use. Um, once I get my other wand out going, I've already got a prep plate waiting for that. I've already got a plate for my other ender. i got to order another one. I have three enders now. I already got it on the E10. already got it on the other CR10. I mean, this stuff is just, it's bonkers. It's amazing. I mean, you try taking your scraper and hacking at, you know, build tack or um, PEI. <laughs> no, that ain't gonna work, buddy. <laughs> You're gonna destroy it. Now, isn't that interesting? This mirror is actually smaller. That's right. The build plate is actually slightly bigger than 12 by 12. So let's try. I believe one of these panels is actually slightly larger. It really doesn't matter, but why not? Let's check. Yeah, that's a little bigger. I think I'll go with that. Oh, much better. It's a perfect fit for the glass, although it's still not quite as big as the bed. But that's okay, it's the exact right size for the glass. So the, it says 12 by 12, but it's actually uh, 304 millimeters. Maybe that is 12, maybe the other one's slightly less than 12. I don't know. It don't matter. So, applying the Print and Z is very simple. Get your set, make sure it actually lines up right for you. Okay. Make sure your piece of glass is actually flat. It's flat. Because once you attach it, you ain't getting it off. <laughs> it's on there for good. Trash box over here. Now the way I do this, is I put one corner down. I stick it, and that holds just enough to let me line up the other corner. When I have both corners lined up, I just lay it down. It's so thick, you're not going to have to worry about air bubbles. It doesn't work that way when it's this thick. Don't push down on your bed, although this is quite a bit stronger than the E10. And just make sure it's stuck down nice and good. Put this one on the side for now. You can fold the um the clip in once you have it leveled, or just leave it off for now until you have your Z hop and your G code. Otherwise, you're just going to crash into it when you do your print. And I forgot to plug it in. That's kind of important. Well, that 
light's going to go away for now. And this is going to be noisy because I have not upgraded this yet. I guess I can bring the camera over here now. So you guys can see this get going. Actually, it's not bad. My first one was louder. That's actually not too bad, really. It's noisy, but it's not like, oh my god, I'm gonna die, it's so noisy. It's not that bad. Okay, so, first thing is to home. Prepare. X is good. Y is good. And Z is coming down. See, I actually like the single Z rod of the CR10. That's because you never have to level your X gantry. So as long as it works properly, you never have to level it. And I really like that. Mm. And as you can see, I just picked the damn thing up and do it. If anybody knows of a source for these flat springs that they use on these things, I want them really bad. I don't got my nice knobs on here yet. Oh yeah, wrong way. And remember, when you get close, give your bed a tap. Make sure your spring is seated right. And you're not going to end up being too loose. homing it again since I probably moved it when I did all this. was weird. The stepper let go. 
kind of like what the Z was doing before. Look at this. It's not engaged. Oh. There might be something wrong with my stepper. Oh, it's definitely grabbing. Okay. That was weird. Never seen it do that before. Huh. I've never seen it do that before. I don't have to put a nut on that back one, it's a little too loose. The stepper wire must have been loose, so I reseeded it and it appears to have stopped doing it. Just did it again. On its own. Oh, that's weird. Let me get it level. We'll figure that out later. Oh, that's weird. Now it's grabbed, I can slide the printer with the stepper. So I have no idea what that's all about. I had the plate moved all the way forward so I can adjust the nuts in the back and it just let go and the plate rolled back. Like I hit disable steppers, even though I didn't hit disable steppers. Weird. Let's preheat. Temperature, bed, bring it up to 50. Bring the nozzle up to 200. I am getting a temperature off of both, and they are both climbing. It just let go. I just heard the steppers let go. Well, isn't that interesting? I wonder if that's normal or abnormal. Now Z's still holding on. X and Y have let go. Oh no, Z let go as well. So all three axes, and that's free spinning. That is not good. There we go, it doesn't freeze fall anymore. All righty, let's load the memory card with my standard assortment of files.
just taking me a couple minutes to transfer the files over to the memory card. Pear flavored tea. Oh my god, it's so good. It's bad for me, it's sugar, but got it for a dollar a bottle. I can't resist yummies like that. <laughs> Bed's heating up nice. Nozzle's at temperature, so I can load the filament. Oh, it's already starting to ooze. Oh, well, hot end works. That's a good thing. That means I can put this on now, since I will have my program files on there. Well, I don't think I need it. I mean, it's not moving. I'm gonna leave it off. It's <coughs> a lot of files. Why is that so big? I don't need all those. Let's see, what do I need? Um, I do want to do this eventually. And this. And this, and this. And this. I don't need that. I could use that, that. Don't need that. I do like that. I don't need that. I could use Big Ben. Bloom Basket. Big 3 Benji. Don't need the cat. Let's just do those. There we go, 600 megabytes. <laughs> G-code files can be big. I didn't realize how big G-code files could be. Jeez. I'm gonna drop you guys down so that you can see the print print when the time comes. I love this tripod. This little 21 inch short tabletop tripod really is nice. Printing out some more 29 millimeter motor retention. I gotta get the power supply for the other one. I burned up the power supply. Gotta fix my wand now, figure out what's wrong with that. Most likely I burned power connection to loose wire because it resets part way through a print now. And apparently that's a pretty common issue with a loose wire inside. Ooh man, a fresh clean piece of gigantic print and Z. That's nice. Don't forget one of your most important 3D printing tools, the flashlight, so you can see it print. I'm on, 45 seconds. Should have just paused you guys, but you know, whatever. <laughs> As you can see, these CR10s are ridiculously easy to put together. I mean, it's nothing. You don't have to really do anything at all. Um, I guess we could talk about it while I'm waiting for that to finish. That's almost done. While we're printing, I'll talk about it. Come on! Go away, go away. Give me another, make it back. Thank you. Change SD, print from SD, we go to PLA, we go to test prints, and we will print out a Marvin. I love my little Marvins. This will already be at temp. Okay, I will let you guys see what's going on here.
There we go. Needs to come up a little bit. Not too, too much. That's a little too tight. So I gotta raise it up a little bit. Oh, big news. I think I had a little micro clog. Seems to be going good now. Alright, now what you do is you stop it, restart it. Stop print. Scrape off your mess. Do it again. Lower the speed this time. Lower down to It was a little too low, so it was stopping the nozzle. And now it's not. Be a little higher. A little higher. A little higher, a little higher. Higher still. Not bad, higher still. That's not too bad. I think it's still a little too high. Uh, not high enough, I mean. There we go. You can tell because when it's doing the infill, it's tearing up its own infill. In fact, let me show you. Let's get that one finished. Okay. Let's see if I can zoom in here so you can see. Come on. Can't I zoom in that close? Okay. Now if you notice, See how this one's tore up a little bit? It's got these lines, not bad. Now this one's a little smoother. All right, that one's pretty good. This one, you can see it's tearing itself up a little bit because the nozzle was a little too close to the bed. So it was stuffing itself a little bit. That's the advantage of slowing it down is you can, you can see what the little bugger's doing and you can adjust it. Okay, so now, scrape off our mess. And go again. Don't forget after making adjustments, give the bed a little knock, make sure the springs are settled. 
print Marvin. Let's go to 100%. Give it a head start. Get out of there. Once again. Yeah, that looks good. Very nice. Got a little bit of garbage stuck to the nozzle, but it'll come off eventually. Perfect. Now that's a nice level. Beautiful. I got no complaints, let's crank it up. Let's see how fast we can do a Marvin, 400%. You guys wanna watch? Why not? Good. No elephant's foot either. It's a fine tune adjustment, but you don't want to over squish on printing Z. You can, it's not going to hurt it, it's just going to make it a bear to get the part off. Um, you'll have to make sure this is nice and sharp and really get it underneath the edge a little bit of the part. And once you get under a little bit and give it a wiggle, it'll pop right off, but it can be really hard. Um, but you don't have to squish so hard. And this is perfect, no elephant's foot. There we go. I saw it counting down three, two, one to stopping the clip. Oh man, that means like 12 gigabytes of video. I should have lowered the resolution of this video. <laughs> I wonder if I can get you guys in there so you can see this go. There we go. It's probably at 80 millimeters a second, maybe. If I had to guess. So, should you buy a CR-10? I think I've had enough time with them now to be able to render an opinion. I'll have a full review video later at some point, but um, I would say, um, if you need to print big, yes. I mean, it's, it's pretty much the most printer you can buy for the dollar, and the parts appear to be good. I haven't run into any serious issues, except for my Z-Drop, but that was a, um, a fugly cable going to the Z-Stepper motor. When I reseated those cables, I never had the drop ever again. So I'm going to guess bad electrical connection in the in the um in that particular. Oh, there we go. That's better. Bad electrical connection for the Z stepper, but now that's not an issue. I reseated it, and I haven't had a problem since. Um, I actually haven't even made any modifications to the printer. The cover for the um, the feeder is cosmetic. The um, only two modifications you really need is a slightly improved um, blower piece, which is a 10-minute print. It's stupid easy. In fact, maybe I'll print one in pink just for the hell of it. And then um, the strain relief for the heat bed. Otherwise, I have made no modifications to my CR-10. It just 
you don't see me doing too much with the CR-10 because there's not much to do. I mean, it just, I have that thing going 24-7. It never stops. I mean, if anybody knows how to get this thing to read out how many hours and meters of filament it does like the Wandhouse do, I'd love to do that because it's got to be a ridiculous number. That thing runs 24-7. It just, it never stops. <laughs> it's always doing something. And, um... You know, I always have it doing big prints. I mean, just big, gigantic prints because, well, they're nice. This is my first experience with Esun's regular PLA, and so far, I'm happy. It looks fine. Let me drop the temp down to 195, see if that does anything. Although, no, I'm going to leave it at 200 because um, slightly hotter is better when you're going this fast. I hope that's in focus. I think it is. But, um, yeah, add a piece of glass. Unless yours is flat. If yours is flat, keep the one you got. But the only upgrades I can see needing are the strain relief. Replace the fans with something quieter, although the fans in this one aren't as noisy. I still think that's the loudest one right there, so I'll be replacing that one. But um, besides the fans, and that's not a functional issue, that's a, a comfort desire issue. The only changes I would make is to add a print and Z surface, and um, new blower part, strain relief, and that's it. Oh, and I also always do my SD card adapters. That's these things here. I'll be building this into the printer at a later point, but that's these things here. The um, That converts the micro SD to the full size SD card. But that, again, that's a convenience thing. I hate messing with the micro SD cards. So I prefer to have the full size SD cards. They're just more durable easier to manhandle when you've got gigantic hands like this. Um, little, And I know those micro SD slots are a little delicate. But beyond that, I mean, I would like to make a new spool holder, one that's like the hick. I would like to make the spool holder like this, where it's straight up and down. And of course that's out of focus. See how that one's straight up and down? I would like to have a couple of those to mount on my printers. I think they're better. I like the idea better. Um, I think they do a better job. Okay. It's printing the Marvin just fine. You can see the skirt's nice and clean. I think a little bit of spooge in the beginning got stuck on the inside of the model, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, I got... I got no complaints. I love my CR10. It's not perfect. It's got issues. Um, but none of them are difficult to deal with. None of them are hard. I mean, fewer issues than the E10. I love my E10 too. Here, I'll give you a sneak peek of what that one's working on. Look at that. Yeah, that's coming off that freaking 8 E10. That's amazing. Those lines you're seeing, that's not imperfections, that's the infill inside, because that's a um, natural um, PLA. It's clear. But, um, and of course, I'm gonna give you a real quick sneak peek. You're only gonna get a second of it. Ready? Ah, that's all you're getting. You're gonna have to wait. <laughs> that's what the other CR10's working on. I think the first thing I'm gonna print on this one is, um, come on focused on you. There we go. I think the first thing I'm going to do on this one is, um, after I do a vase, is to um, print out the tail cone um, boat tail fin unit for a rocket I'm designing. I've been itching to do it. But my CR10 is always busy with another project, so. <laughs> we are at 10 minutes into this print.
Yeah, this is really not that bad. I, I think I just got a particularly noisy one. I'm still going to replace the fans just because I like quieter. The steppers are noisy enough on this thing. So I make the fans as quiet as I can. If you're unsure about 3D printing and you want to get your your chops wet without investing too much into it, buy an Ender 2. It's $163 for one of the highest quality 3D printers money can buy at this budget level. You know, I consider it to be one of the highest quality printers you could buy for less than $1,000. The prints I'm getting from it are nothing short of absolutely astonishing. I mean, truly freakishly astonishing. That I have three of them and I want more. Just because I want to create a farm of those little buggers to print out all my parts. They're just amazing. Oh, the new setup I have going. That is the debris from the printer we just built. Uh, so over here, I'm going to have the two CR10s and the E10. And then on this table, my work table to work on stuff, I will have the three enders sitting over here. I just had dinner. Okay. And then over there, on the cart, I will have the two duplicators, the Maker Select and the One Howl. And uh, when all is said and done, I'll have eight of these little buggers going. <laughs> eight printers going. That's crazy. <laughs> it's kind of addicting. And the only one that got sent to me for free is the E10, which I'm glad because I'm really using that E10 a lot, but I never would have bought it on my own. The reason I wouldn't have bought it on my own is because I have two CR10s, so I wouldn't need an E10. I would have just bought another you know, Ender, or two Enders. But um, I really like that printer. I mean, it does a truly fantastic job. And do you see that plastic orange part right there? That is the only addition you need to make to that printer. You do need to um, solder the connections for the heat bed. I noticed that the heat bed had six connections and they were only using four. Two for the heat bed and two for the thermistor. If they would use the other two to double up the wiring to um, through the heat bed so that each connection was taking half the amperage, I think they'd be fine with the connector that's on there. Uh, mine started burning up. It started melting and it got intermittent, so I just soldered them directly to the connectors. But I think if they were to connect that wire to two pins so that they had two conduction paths for both the... Um, the ground, the neutral, and the um, the hot wire, the positive, I think they'd be fine. So hopefully that's a, that's a super easy modification they could make. And um, it would greatly improve the safety factor of that printer. Hmm. Come on. Look at the quality of that print. It really is staggering how good that printer prints. And that's a freaking A-net, man. I mean, at times, that approaches um, ender quality. Not quite, but it gets there. How's a little Marvin going? He's going okay. Or should I say, she's going okay. We're at 14 minutes. Let me take some of that light off. Wonder if the battery will hold out long enough. Hey, <laughs> yeah, probably. We're almost done. As soon as this Marvin's done, we're done. Very next thing I'm going to print out is my leveling knobs. I'll probably just do them in pink because they're here. I've already got it loaded. Might as well just print the buggers.
The only change I made in the firmware was to reduce the jerk to 10. I did that to all my printers. If anybody knows how to save that change, how do you save it? Can you save it? I don't see a way of saving it. If anybody knows how I because every time I turn it off, it changes back again. So if anybody knows how to save the changes that I make in the printer, let me know. Yeah, I don't see any way of saving it. So every time I power off the printer, it changes my jerk setting back to 20. And I don't want it at 20, I want it at 10. It just prints better. Let's see, what are my plans for the CR10? I don't think I'll ever change the CR10. They, they print so well for what they are. I really don't want to go messing with them. The only further modification I might make is to put a, um, a hobbed extruder gear on there with um, some PTFE tubes so that I can print flexible filament. Because I do still want to print a pair of shoes, which means I'm going to need to be able to print with TPU. And... Um, go from there I got a couple of hardened nozzles so I can print some of the more exotic filaments and some of the weirdo filaments you know, the carbon fibers and the glow in the darks and stuff like that and um, I got an idea to print with glow in the dark filament and then put a UV LED inside the model so the UV LED will constantly charge the filament and make it glow all the time. The advantage is you can make it glow with whatever color is there and you can do it with a single LED and that might be interesting. Then again it might be easier just to put whatever color LED you want in there and just let it glow. But I'm thinking the glow-in-the-dark filament might be a more even glow. Nope, too close. There we go. That's a nice pink. I like that. I gotta see if I can find a hot pink. Not magenta, but a good hot pink. We are getting close now, we're at 19 minutes. I want to guess three more minutes, four more minutes. going to start slowing down now as I bump into the minimum layer time for cooling. Yep, it's slowing down. Ah, I just heard the secondary fan turn on in the brain box, the one that's thermally controlled. So it took 20 minutes for that to turn on. At an ambient temperature of 73 degrees. I got the humidity in my pet G bag so low 
that it will now I'm going to slow it down for the handle Hey, I just realized the Marvin matches my shirt. And there you have it. We have an unboxing build or assembly and leveling. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Will it focus? I don't think it will. That is one of the nicest keyring holes I've ever seen on a Marvin. Very nice. I mean, it's actually nice and round. Very cool. Um, so, unboxing from a sealed box to... Oh, and I forgot the, um, the CR-10 doesn't come with a spare hot end. I purchased a spare hot end for my CR-10. That's why I thought it did... Um, the Enders and the E10 came with a spare hot end, but not the CR10. Um, although they're not expensive, you can buy them from Thai machines. So um, we've gone from box received in the mail to leveled and first print with Print Z surface. We're good to go. Now I'm going to instruct this printer to print out the. Um, strain relief for the heat bed and my ultimate print knobs I will also link those below I'm not gonna sit here for the next two hours recording that kinda silly and we will go from there I hope you guys enjoy the video um, that's it I've used a lot of these printers long enough that I'll be giving my preliminary final thoughts review on them I don't like doing an actual review on a printer until I've used it for a while, so I'm never going to be the first out there. I'm never going to have my videos out the fastest because, well, I've got to take my time and make sure it's right. But I've got over a thousand hours of printing on my CR-10 now, and the second one is as perfect as the first one. So I think I'm in a position where I can give my preliminary thoughts on it. Same with the Enders and the E10. I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours of prints on all of them. They go 24-7. If I am in this building, these printers are going, and I try to schedule them to print while I'm gone so they never And of course, that battery couldn't hold out for a few more seconds, could it? <laughs> so, here is our Marvin. Everything pop off the print bed clean. And we have our little Marvin. Perfect print as usual. No complaints, no issues. Beautiful print. A little zitting, but part of that is from me cranking the speed up so high. And I've never optimized this file. This is the, one of the original files I programmed for the um, CR10 to print my little Marvin. But even even the zitting it does have is extremely minor. You can see there, it's barely visible. It's just a damn good printer. Really good printer. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell your friends about me. See if they like me. Obviously, the more subscribers I have, the more potential I have to make a little money on this um, which helps keep all this going and don't forget those are affiliate links below if you decide to buy something you don't have to um, I provide descriptions for everything so if you don't want to use affiliate link at all you could just put the search into Amazon or Gearbest or whatever and um, remember if you want to buy anything on Amazon just click on one of my links first and I get credit for it even if you don't buy what I link to I hope you guys enjoy it you have a great night